right, hey guys. So let's talk number five here. Um, I have these things written out the way that they already are in the uh, in the key. I'm not going to rewrite them because it's a lot of writing. Um, but two congruent triangles are similar. That is always. So the thing I want you guys to think about here, okay? If I've got two congruent triangles, let's let's draw these out. If I've got two congruent triangles, what that means is that I know all the sides are the same but I also know that all the angles are the same. Well, right now, all I need for similarity is angle to angle, right? So I mean, look, I've got, I've already got angle to angle, I actually got angle to angle to angle. So I have plenty to prove similarity. So. But I wrote here congruent triangles must oh that's wrong. congruent triangles must have congruent angles so they must also be similar by a right so as long as I've got congruence I always also have similarity now the opposite of that two similar triangles are congruent that interesting. that is a sometimes so we could imagine that we have you know these two triangles that are both similar, you can, you can be both similar and congruent at the same time, that can happen. However, I could also have, if I'm slightly dilated, now these could be similar. So I mean, they could have all, they could have the same angles, but they're clearly not congruent. So there are some times when they are similar and congruent, but it can also be similar without being congruent. So what I said is if the two similar triangles have congruent corresponding sides, then they will also be congruent. So there is a time when it could be congruent, but not always. Two squares are similar. So remember that our rules for similarity, there have to be two things. Um, we have to have congruent angles, and we have to have um, uh, proportional sides. I almost forgot that. So what I know about every single possible square is that all angles will always be 90, right? So every single square always has four 90 degree angles. So that means I always have congruent angles. That's always taken care of. Now, when I think about proportional sides, well, think about any square. You know, if I've got side lengths of two, then my ratio is two over two, which is one. Let's say it's a bigger square than that. Let's say I've got side lengths of 30. Well, my ratio is 30 over 30, so that's still one. So the side ratios are of any two squares are always going to be proportional because they're always going to be one. So in the side ratios will always be one to one. Okay, so that squares two rectangles are congruent, so that's Possible, right? I can imagine, right? Oh man, that's not a good rectangle. That's okay. Like I could imagine two congruent rectangles. That's fine. But they don't, they obviously don't have to be congruent because I could also imagine two not congruent rectangles. All right. So yeah, it's true that they will, like, like I said here in my answer, it is true. It's it's a sometimes. It is true that they always have 90 degree angles, but they certainly can have different side lengths. They don't have to have same, the same side lengths. They don't have to be congruent. So that's a sometimes. They're not bad. All right, and then two circles are similar. That's always, so I mean, honestly guys, just imagine two circles, right? Like this circle and that circle. I can always dilate one circle. Oh, that was weird, right? Why is it not? What the heck, you guys? Who did that to me? There we go. I can always dilate one circle so that it becomes any other circle, so that it maps on to another circle. It doesn't have any angles, so I don't need to worry about that. I can always dilate one circle so that it matches with another one. All you gotta do is dilate, that's all. It's always similar. All right, so that's the answers. So I came up with for number five. If you have questions about any specific one, obviously you can just come and ask. 